I'm Ryan Hall. Uh, I'm a social studies teacher here at Davies, and I run the Social Justice Club. I'm here representing not only the students at Davies, but the students across Rhode Island. I am representing my community at Davies and some, you know, fellow Rhode Island students. I'm here on behalf of all students of Rhode Island, and I support this bill. Uh, a few months ago, we were made aware of this bill um, that, that was introduced in the House and, and uh, its uh, partner bill that was introduced in the Senate. The Social Justice Club students have been testifying uh, at uh, the House Finance Committee and uh, the Senate Education Committee um, in regards to a bill that has to do with universal school meals. We, we got them to prepare some testimony about uh, what they think uh, about school meals, what they think about this bill, um, what they think about um, the equity and justice behind it. Um, and then uh, we arranged it so we could get to the state house. I'm here for the bill because it's true for many students, it's the only place they can get a full meal. I experienced this myself when I was homeless last year and knowing that I can get a breakfast and lunch for free at school was one less thing I had to worry about. I am for this bill. Students all over the state deserve equal opportunities to meals free of charge and meals that we need to function on a school day should not be profited profited off of for state funding. When students don't eat, they're deprived and drained of, drained of energy. I have seen people pass out in class who are unable to complete their work because of low energy. I think it's important to consider the financial burden that school lunches place on families. We know that when a student does not receive an adequate meal for breakfast or lunch, they go into survival mode, making them not pay attention in class as they're focused on hunger. Students get irritable, moody, and sluggish because they don't have the proper energy to focus and participate in class. At the beginning of the school year when we had to pay again, it was a struggle for me and my mother because we both were struggling with paying bills and all that stuff because we we're, we're hopping from place to place and we just simply couldn't afford it, and my grades we did went down. Another example is my friend worrying about the debt of getting lunch. She is constantly not eating during the day because she is worried that she will owe the school money. Would it be better if everyone had an equal opportunity to be able to eat during school? Nearly one in three Rhode Island households can't afford an adequate meal. So students rely on school to give them the healthy, nutritious meals they need. 41% of food insecurity in Rhode Island is higher for households with at least one child under 18. This shows that students are the ones suffering from having to pay for their food. I know there's many other students just like me who are going through a struggle, who, care, who are too afraid to speak and go hungry for days. This is something that students should not have to worry about since we are forced by law to be in school. No student should have to go without a meal because they simply can't afford it or sometimes they just rather save their money to where it matters the most. Even if you have to go starving on a school day after say eight hours of work, because a lot of our students at our school specifically, we are a tech school, we do work study. Providing free universal meals can help ensure students have access to the nutritious meals they need to succeed in school. Sometimes when I run off a day of no food, I struggle with paying attention in my classes and I lose a lot of motivation. Not being able to pay for lunch led me to creating unhealthy eating habits at home as I got an eating disorder because I would skip out on lunch at home because I was used to skipping out on lunch at school. Not eating for almost eight hours at a time decreased my performance in my classes and I wasn't really like doing the best. We should be reducing the stress on students and allowing them to be most successful versions of themselves. School should be a place where students shouldn't have to ask themselves, can I afford to eat today? If we can give free education, we can give universal meals to all and help us get our focus back on learning. Some of us really can't afford to eat. We should be allowing students to live up to their full potential at school, which is giving them free lunch. The House Committee was very receptive, uh, very receptive. They were excited to, to see our students and uh, to hear from the perspective of kids in a classroom. They were also excited that they were well prepared. Again, so well received um, by the head of the committee. The Senate um, was uh, very similar, except they, uh, they actually brought tears to the eyes of some of the senators when they were delivering their testimony. Um, it can be really moving, especially when you're talking about issues about um, justice and, and food. How 
um, brave you are and courageous you are to share your story, but also I do believe that you all bring your own unique perspective of why it's needed. And Clarissa just brought like great data for us about food insecurity and also healthy eating habits and also your personal challenge, right? So I really appreciate you being so um, such a leader and speaking for all of the Rhode Island students that really deserve to have free meals. So thank you. You know, one of the great parts of doing this job, all of us would say that when we see uh, young individuals like yourselves come and testify and do it so well, it tells us that some things in life are working. And uh, just stay at it. You're advocating very well, and we really appreciate that. And we heard it. That's what I'm saying. In three minutes or less, we heard what we needed to hear. You did a good job tonight. Hard to follow that. I'm a lot more. <laughs> I, I know. Y'all yeah. are awesome. I'm I am so proud of these kids and the work they put in um, to share their stories and to be able to come um, and stand in front of the movers and shakers of the state to be able to to watch these kids share their stories and affect change and to learn how to affect change. It's really fantastic. I'm really proud of these kids. Well, there's a letter writing campaign um, that has, uh, has come to our attention and we're excited to take part in that. If you're interested in helping out, you can find that information at DaviesTech.org. I, I have three people uh, on the staff that have actually joined the club as well. Um, and they have been instrumental to everything that we've been able to do this year. Um, Shaleen Plant, uh, Dina Lewis, and Nick Brochi um, have been, again, instrumental uh, to everything. Social Justice Club meets after school on Tuesdays. For anybody who's interested in uh, joining up and trying to affect change um, where it's needed, and even if you just want to come and put some context to some complex things. Item number five on today's calendar is Senate Bill 68 by Chairwoman Connell and Act Relief to Education, Federal Aid. Clerk will please unlock the machine. If all members have cast their vote, the clerk will lock the machine. There are 32 votes in the affirmative, three in the negative, and the act passes.